All right, the North Carolina Tar Heels take on Boston College, and that's going to be a 1 o'clock Eastern tip-off. UNC's minus 7 away from home with the total at 139.5. And, and if you want to see which one of these free YouTube picks on my channel that I'm actually betting on personally, there's only one way to do that, and that's to sign up for a membership on my website at brockpage.com. And if you like betting on the NFL... We're currently 4-1 in our last five NFL tier package picks on that very same website. And if you like betting on the NBA, we're also hitting at 67% in our last 30 NBA tier package picks on that very same webpage as well. But when it comes to UNC versus Boston College, the Tar Heels have really been shooting lights out this season they're drilling nearly 40% uh, of their three-pointers. and They're also in the top 10 in offensive field goal percentage on the road. Armando Baycott is scoring over 15 points a game, along with nine rebounds. Meanwhile, Caleb Love is dropping over 41% of his three-pointers himself. He's also scoring 15 points a game. UNC is averaging 80, uh, 82 points a night when traveling Meanwhile, defensively, they've done a pretty nice job under the boards there as well. They're taking on a Boston College team who's on a two-game losing streak themselves, and they failed to cover in six out of their last nine. Now, BC struggled offensively this season as well, as they're averaging only 67 points a game. Now, BC, they failed to cover against the likes of Albany, Columbia, and Fairfield uh, recently as well. Now, total-wise, three out of Boston College's last five ball games got over the line, throwing out that Albany fiasco. Meanwhile, UNC saw games with Kentucky, Tennessee, and Purdue get over the posted number themselves. I'm going to lean toward UNC minus seven in the over 139 and a half. Next ball game, it's going to be in the Big Ten. I'm talking about Michigan State versus Northwestern. This should be a good one. And that's a 2 o'clock Eastern start time. Now, the Michigan State Spartans are minus 1.5 with the total at 139. But despite being the slight favorite in this one, Sparty's actually failed to cover against the likes of High Point, Toledo, and Baylor here recently. And for whatever reason, whenever the Spartans put their opponents to the line, more than not, their opponents are making them pay. And short story long, what I'm trying to get at here is Michigan State's opponents are making nearly 73% of their foul shots against them. So uh, maybe they should start fouling different players. I don't know. That's certainly a, a an, an interesting uh, trend there. Now, Sparty's taking on a Northwestern team who won eight out of their last 10. And they remain undefeated on their home court. The Wildcats are giving up just 56 points a game at the Welsh Ryan Arena, and they're currently in the top 10 in the country in defensive field goal percentage. Now, scoring-wise, Pete Nance is averaging over 16 points a game, along with eight boards and a couple assists. Nance is also drilling over 42% of his three-pointers. Meanwhile, Boo Booey, best name in college basketball, he's scoring over 14.5 points a game himself, along with two boards and five assists as well. Now, the Wildcats are averaging 83 points a game in front of their home crowd. When it comes to the total on this one, Northwestern saw games with Wake Forest, Providence, and High Point get over the posted number. Meanwhile, Michigan State saw their last five straight all get over the line themselves. I'm going to lean toward Northwestern plus one and a half in the over 139. Next contest, we're going to stay in the Big Ten. I'm talking about Indiana versus Penn State. And that's going to be a 4 o'clock Eastern tip-off. Indiana is minus 3 with a total at 130.5. The Hoosiers are on a three-game winning streak. And they also went 8-2 and two straight up in their last 10. Now the Hoosiers are also averaging 85 points a game away from home. And they're drilling 40% of their three-pointers when traveling. Trace Jackson Davis is averaging nearly 20 points a game, along with eight rebounds and three blocks. Meanwhile, Race Thompson is averaging double-digit points a game himself, along with seven boards and a couple assists. 
The Hoosiers are currently in the top five in offensive rebounding on the road. Meanwhile, defensively, Indiana is limiting their competition to just 35% shooting from the field. They're currently in the top three in the nation in that particular category. And that's certainly going to be problems for the Nittany Lions as they're averaging only 67 points per contest this year. Now, Penn State's also struggled to cover the number recently as well. They're just 3-7 and seven against this spread in their last 10. When it comes to the total on this one, Penn State saw their last three straight get over the posted number. Meanwhile, Indiana saw two out of their last three get over the line themselves. They also went 4-3 and three to the over in their last seven. I'm going to lean toward Indiana minus three over 130 and a half. The next ball game, we're going to jump into the ACC. I'm talking about Louisville versus Georgia Tech. And that's going to be a six o'clock Eastern start time. <clears throat> the Louisville Cardinals are minus three and a half, totals 137. But despite being favored in this one, the Cards failed to cover in three out of their last four ball games. Those were failures to cover against the likes of Wake Forest, Western Kentucky, and DePaul during that span. Now, Louisville's had significant problems shooting the basketball. They're making only 41% of their field goals, and they're also draining only 31% of their three balls. Meanwhile, defensively, on the other end of the court, the Cards have struggled to get boards on that uh, end of the court as well. They're taking on a Georgia Tech team who won five out of their last eight at home. And they're led by Michael DeVoe, who's scoring 21 points a game along with five boards and three assists. Now, DeVoe's also drilling 46% of his three-pointers. Meanwhile, teammate Jordan Usher is averaging just about 15 points a game himself, along with seven rebounds as well. Meanwhile, defensively, these guys have been really good at the McCamish Pavilion this year. They're allowing only 66 points per contest there. And they're limiting their competition to only 29% shooting from three land in that same category. Now, total-wise, when it comes to the scoring in this one, Georgia Tech saw their last four straight all fall under the posted number. Meanwhile, Louisville on the other side saw six out of their last nine fall under the line themselves. I'm going to lean toward the underdog Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets plus three and a half in the under 137. Next contest, we're going to bounce back into some Big Ten action. I'm talking about Ohio State versus Nebraska. And that's going to be an 8 o'clock Eastern tip-off. Ohio State is minus 9, numbers 148 and a half. Now, the Buckeyes have been really good shooting the basketball this season. They're in the top 20 in offensive field goal percentage. And they're also drilling 40% of their three-pointers on the road. Kyle Young is uh, drilling nearly 48% of his three-pointers, as well as averaging double-digit points a game. Meanwhile, E.J. Liddell, he's scoring nearly 21 points a night himself, along with seven boards and a couple assists. Now, defensively, the Buckeyes are limiting their competition to just 24% shooting from three land on the road. They're taking on a Nebraska team who lost five out of their last six themselves. And they're covering in only 40% of their home games. Now, the Cornhuskers have struggled shooting the long ball. They're making just 27% of their three-pointers overall for this season. And when it comes to rebounding in this one, Nebraska's also struggled getting boards on the offensive end of the court at home. Now, when it comes to the number in this one, Nebraska did see three out of their last four get over the posted total. 70% to the over in their last 10. Meanwhile, Ohio State went 7-2 to the over in their last nine themselves. I'm going to lean toward Ohio State minus nine in the over 148 and a half. With that, guys, now it's time for our quick pick recap. Powered to you by my website at brockpage.com, where we are currently 4-1 in our last five NFL tier package picks. I like North Carolina minus seven over 139 and a half. Give me Northwestern plus one and a half over 139. I like Indiana minus three over 130 and a hook. Georgia Tech plus three and a half under 137. 
Ohio State minus nine over 148 and a half. And as far as all the uh, rest of the games across the country go, I like Bradley minus three and a half over 139. Jimmy Cornell minus four and a half under 148. I'm leaning toward Northern Iowa minus 11 under 128 and a half. I also like Illinois State plus four over 138. Give me Maine plus 11 under a buck 19. I also like Iona minus 10. And the under 138 and a half. Give me Richmond plus two over 144 and a hook. I also like the SMU Mustangs minus three and a half and the over 147. Give me UMass Lowell minus four and a half under 135. And if a lot of you guys don't know what that means or uh, don't know what those call letters are, um, a lot of places list that as Maslow. So, but anyway, that's UMass Lowell. A lot of places have it, have it uh, listed as Maslow. But anyway, UMass Lowell minus four and a half under 135. Give me Brown plus one under 139 and a hook. I like Temple plus 12 under 125 and a half. Cal Golden Bears minus two over 127. And before I give you my next and final free pick for the video, one final reminder that we are hitting at 67%. In our last 30 NBA tier package picks on BrockPage.com as well. I'm going to lean toward Drake plus four in the over 138. And with that, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on BrockPage.com. Now, if you guys do end up getting a membership here today on my website, it's certainly good news for you uh, because it's a near max value Sunday. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, my website brockpage.com we actually utilize the patreon platform uh, patreon is a crowdfunding website and the way that they do their billing is they bill you the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that so if you do end up getting a membership here today on my website you're going to get access to those picks all the way through the end of january i always tell folks in every single video the earlier in the month you sign up the better and I'll tell you what, it's January 2nd, so there's only one day that is earlier than that. And of course, that's January 1st, so you're almost getting max value. And keep this in mind, too, January, there are 31 days in the month, so uh, you know, you're know you getting a, a really good chunk of uh, service you know, signing up today. So I strongly recommend it. I strongly recommend you consider it. And if you're on the fence or if you're thinking about getting a package, you may also want to think about getting our board member tier because board members get access to every single pick that I give out on that website all the way through the end of January as well. But most importantly, guys, I got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. I really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, guys, happy Sunday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at brockpage.com.